The Murmur project really started as an attempt to uh, create a system that would be inherently multi-user, that would be uh, an interface that people would not have to learn, that would work on devices they already had, and yet still be powerful and rewarding from an artistic perspective. So um, what really made this possible was the confluence of a bunch of different technologies. Uh, for one thing, you have very, very powerful uh, mobile devices now. I'm going to be uh, demoing this with a uh, iPod Touch and uh, an iPhone, both of which are Unix devices uh, running, I, I believe, around 400 megahertz with uh, full support for OpenGL acceleration and a variety of networking protocols. But at the heart of what Murmur is all about is the idea not that you have one device that um, has specific software installed that enables it to do things, but uh, a robust protocol that enable different devices that have different capabilities to speak to each other and do what they do best. So using um, using open standards like zero config or Apple's implementation of that under the name of Bonjour, devices can publish services, uh, in, in other words, uh, publish uh, to the, the world at large what they're capable of doing, and other devices that are listening um, to those messages will know and know what to send those devices, what not to send to them, uh, and so forth. So here we have two little apps running on phones. Basically, it's the same app with slightly different functionality exposed. So she would be player one in this context. Mm -hmm. I would be player two, and the computer could be potentially a player three. And so what she's able to do is um, over, yeah, over the, over the internet, over a local area network, she can control the output of the screen. So I'll just make this... Uh, and this is totally wireless right now. Yeah, it's, everyone's on the same Wi-Fi network, but there's no reason why this wouldn't work also mm -hmm. across the internet. So let's hit some more buttons there. Right. These are effects groups that affect um, the source signal. So now she's got three of the eight groups on. And this is very much uh, what you do if you're a VJ. You have, uh, you have your source material and then you have various uh, mm -hmm. effects filters that you're applying to it. This is basically using a bunch of uh, OpenGL geometry, which is the Quartz Composer is really strong at. And I have to say that these um, these filters right now are from uh, Cortonian Mixer, which is an open oh, source. Oh, the open VGL source. App, mm -hmm. And that guy's brilliant, Roger Bolt. And what is player one? So Your player one is doing that, whereas um, I'm able to change clips and I'm able to. Uh, do some glitchy stuff. I can crossfade between um, um, different views, things mm -hmm. like that. But um, yeah, the the potential is is really uh, endless. You can have every aspect of the, of the performance controlled that way, and you could even uh, put in some logic, such as um, uh, if the server sees that there are, there are three. Um, players, then the types of interfaces it would push out to you would be different than if it's on the two players. Right. But for instance, the third player could be on the host computer, and they have obviously more exposed. So um, here, I'm changing the clips. I'm changing the different banks. Mm -hmm. But that never stops the other players from, from having full impact on the performance as well. Ah, oh, I see. So Marianne, you're also affecting it. Nice. And this is an evolution of your open source Quartz Composer Performer, is that? Exactly. It's Quartz using Composer Performer, which is the rendering tool here, uh, I started on about a year and a half uh, to be an open source uh, Cocoa GUI, or mm -hmm. uh, Cocoa, uh, let's say, controller for Quartz Composer. Quartz Composer is a great, great tool, which uh, comes out of the original development of Pixel Shocks mm -hmm. on the Mac. But it's since become more of a developer's tool. Right. It's not a performance application exactly. in and of itself. So there's certain things that it doesn't handle well in a performance environment. Like, right. Um, Just as interface. banks of clips and, right. and bringing those in, saving preferences for various things, dealing with window management, uh, right. all of these kinds of things that you'd want to have if you were using this in performance. Uh, you need a, a thin layer of Copa. Basically, you just instantiate an OpenGL layer and then you, you, you render everything from. Uh, Quartz Composer into it, but you can send uh, information to Quartz Composer through Cocoa, so then right. you can have your networking and things like that happening in the Cocoa layer, 
and keep that separate from the rendering. And you'll be testing this tonight? Yes, tonight at the uh, Optosonic Tea Room at Experimental Intermedia in uh, downtown New York. And you'll be handing out iPhones <laughs> for the audience to... Uh, to have a interactive performance with, so the audience participation is that one of the ideas? That's one of the ideas. We'll see Very if cool. The iPhones uh, stay in the room. Right, exactly. <laughs> hopefully, they, hopefully they won't walk. Exactly.